Alright, so we're going to do a bouncing ball exercise. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the oval tool. We're going to create an oval, hold shift to uh, keep the constraint of a perfect circle. Uh, click, drag, and release to the size you'd like. I'm going to change the fill, uh, the, the fill paint for the paint bucket tool to a gradient of the default black and gray white uh, circular gradient just to give it more of a, a realistic feel of a, an actual bouncing ball or ball so I'm going to click the outline of the ball the black outline and delete that uh, I'm going to go ahead and stretch out my timeline and I'm going to do this using a pose to pose style of animation. Um, and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just insert keyframes and reposition my ball to um, certain points on the timeline and you'll see. I'm going to also include a squash and stretch which I'll demonstrate later in this tutorial and reposition. I want it to start off the screen and um, come onto the screen. So insert keyframe and what do you know? So we're going to go back, control Z, scroll back to frame one, grab the ball, reposition, right click, insert keyframe, scrub ahead, a few frames ahead, and click the ball, reposition, scrub, scroll, uh, click on the timeline, insert keyframe, and we're going to do this all the way through. Um, I'm going to have the ball bounce probably twice, so here's the first contact position. Insert keyframe. And in order to get the squash and stretch effect that I'm looking for, I'm going to uh, scrub backwards a little bit and insert a keyframe in between the high point and the contact. And just a few frames before it to make sure I get that, um, that squash and stretch feel that I'm looking for. I will also be inserting uh, classic tweens later. For this style, it seems to work the best for this uh, exercise. And you're just going ahead and going through this. And, and the, the entire time, you want to keep in mind that you want to have, uh, have some type of gravity with this, with uh, um, weight and timing. You don't want it to just be floating around as if it were in outer space. and just falls to the ground very slowly and then bounces up uh, even slower. Um, or whatever. It j just uh, just try and get the, the feel of an actual ball bouncing. So we've got the first bounce in there as far as key poses are concerned and key frames. And then go ahead, reposition the ball, insert keyframe. And this is, um, this can be very tedious, but um, the results will show at the end. The more time you spend on it, obviously, the better this, this uh, exercise will look for you. I'm just doing this fairly quickly just to give you an idea of uh, one way of doing this. So it appears I'm missing somewhere along the line that keyframe where I made the contact disappeared. So I'm going to have to go back through there, scrub through the timeline and make sure I get that uh, fixed before I continue on. 
And as you uh, keep putting in uh, keyframes and repositioning your ball, you always want to uh, scrub through it a little bit. And not necessarily scrub through it yourself, hit the play button, because a lot of times uh, a lot of people um, scrub through it to how uh, they think it'll play, and it, it'll mess you up in the long run. So they they scrub it so it, it seems like it's going at the speed they want, but when you actually play it, it plays at a different speed. So when you scrub through, just every once in a while hit the play button and make sure that it's uh, looking the way you want it to. And just go ahead and keep inserting keyframes. And these are the key poses for this uh, bouncing ball. And reposition. Insert keyframe. And reposition. And insert keyframe. So now let's see. Just double checking that that contact point got in there. And now we're going to scroll right on top of that keyframe where we want. And we're going to start adding uh, squash and stretch effects. So select the free transform tool and then just transform it. And there's your squash. And then and go to the next key pose or key frame. Select it. Select the sub select or the free transform tool and stretch it out. You don't want to stretch it too much. I mean, it really depends on how quickly the ball is moving. Um, the harder the ball hit, the faster the ball is moving, the harder it's going to hit. The more it's going to squash, and then when it's uh, recoiling, it's going to uh, stretch a lot more too. So here's the other contact. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little squash and a little stretch. And we go on to here on the recoil pose here and we'll just give it a little stretch. Make it a little thinner. And we'll go back and just double check these other frames here. And there's the first squash and there's the stretch. So I'm going to go back in there and just thin it out a little bit. Give it a little bit more, uh, make it a little more slim. Okay, and, and just scrub through it continuously to make sure that your uh, your frames aren't getting messed up as mine did in the very beginning. The first keyframe didn't uh, didn't get set for some reason, or when I repositioned it, it some, something happened. So just go through it every once in a while and make sure. What I'm doing now is I'm just clicking in between each uh, in between each keyframes, and I'm inserting a classic tween. And this will give your illusion of movement, and you'll have your animated bouncing ball. And let's go ahead, and I'll just name the layer. It's always good to keep your layers named.
Uh, just name it Ball. Mm, let's play it. It's getting there. It looks pretty, pretty decent. And then there it is in the uh, in the Swift file. So there's your bouncing ball, your bouncing ball exercise, and uh, yeah, the longer you play with it, the, the better it's going to look. This was just a quick demonstration to uh, show you some key poses, uh, squash and stretch, weight and timing, and uh, classic tweens. So hope it hope this was helpful.